Comedy gold. <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid direction. It's of Corbin. We learned it all at the improv. And you can follow us on Instagram. Instagram. Oh, juice it. Oh, rub it. Squeeze it out like overflowing bosom. <sighs> and uh, follow us on Instagram. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, bell icon. Yeah, bell icon thing. Subscribe. Speaking of overflowing bosoms, my daughter's a cow. <laughs> And she'd be the first one to tell you that. It's not an insult, guys. She just had her second child. Yeah. <laughs> and the amount of milk she's producing... No, so. Just don't ever call is... your actual child a cow. No, unless she's been calling herself that. I and still, would I still readily... don't know if I would do that, right? No, no, no. She I would readily be laughing, watching this herself at home. Hi, Ashley. And... <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Anyway. Hey, we're doing a movie review. Or in Ashley's case... <laughs> yep, she's pumping, kids. Oh, my word. Anyways, uh, t we watched the 2015 Hindi film Waiting, not to be confused with the Ryan Gosling film Waiting, yep. which is actually a hilarious movie if you've ever been a waiter. It's actually quite funny. Which is it? about, no, I have not seen it. I have it, not seen it. It's like an old school, early 2000s comedy, Ryan Reynolds, um, but it's all about, he's a waiter, and yeah. it's all about the waiting life, the... the the relationship with the line cooks. Right. And it, oh, it's very I would funny. Love it. Yeah, if you've been a waiter, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Anyways, but yeah, so it's not that film. Uh, this is a film that we, we saw the trailer to, and it took me forever to find it. Yes. Um, finally found it. I was very, very happy we were able to find it. Because we were like, I think, if I'm not mistaken, when I saw the trailer, it ended and I said, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, directed by Anu Menon. Mm -hmm. Menon. Yep. Uh, and then. And co written by yes. Anu Menon. Uh, it's starring uh, two names. Uh, well, at least the one, Kalki Kaiklin. This yeah. other guy. This other guy. Seared and Shaw. He he's got, got a future. He got a late start in this. He's life. got a future. Let me tell you, he got a late start. Uh, but he might make a name for himself. Yeah. Any, oh, and there's also. Um, well, also, uh, yeah, our, we, there's two people. Uh, Rajat Kapoor, yes. who we've seen several times yes. and have always liked, yes. and Arjun Mathura, who right. we most recently saw in Made in Heaven. That's right. Uh, okay, sorry. I thought I thought he was here for a second. I was like, why doesn't he have a picture on IMDb? Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah. but there's somebody who spent a review if you haven't watched it. Uh, it's uh, I don't know where you can watch it. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, no clue. We saw it on. Uh, it might be more readily available in India than it is here in America. Nah. But anyways, uh, it's hundred percent worth. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Uh, and Rick, your and initial then come thoughts. on back, please. Seventeenth of the year, two hundred and twenty-fourth all time, one hundred and thirty-ninth Hindi. Ooh. Set. Hey. Uh, is that in your thing? No, I just oh. it. no. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you get when you combine two extremely talented actors, long scenes of well-crafted dialogue? Given circumstances that are deeply human, convincingly believable, universally relatable, empathetically heartbreaking, yet also soul-inspiring, you get waiting. Uh, we've been waiting a long time to see this one ever since we saw the trailer, as we just said, which we loved and were really excited about when we saw it, solely because the film wasn't easily available to us here in the U.S. And thankfully, we finally saw this feature-length film that feels more like a short film. Mm. And yes, pun intended, waiting was worth the wait. So I'm in, yeah, fully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I really enjoyed this film. Um, and I'll, the the really the only gripes I have is that I actually wish it was longer. It would have been nice to be with them a little yeah. longer. Yeah, uh, I think at times it might have felt like I think a two hour film might have been perfect. We might have been an hour forty five even. Might yeah. have been able to sit in some scenes a little longer. Might have been able to maybe do stuff. It's. Really I love the film. I thought yeah. the film is absolutely fantastic. But if I'm if I'm going for a gripe, I wish actually this film was longer, which yeah. is great for a That's film. A great thing That's to say. Like you're like you want. Oh, that. you want this film to be actually longer? Because normally it's like uh, they probably could have cut some some fat off here. Yeah. I feel like they could have put some fat on this thing. Yeah, it felt uh, like a short film. Yeah, yeah. it did. Um, but anyways, yeah. So let's just get into it. Um, let's talk about our future dosed uh, Nisard and Chow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One, one day. One day. Sir, I yes. have your... And you have to dress like this. Just like that for the interview. In person, please. We'll join you. We'll oh, do it together. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I will absolutely. That would be amazing. If you did that, we'd join you. He's like, no, I'm No, I'm, I'm never doing that, guys. <laughs> Anyways, 
He, uh, man, he's, it's, it's hard to put into words how good he is because he is that good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like when you see any legend who's just amazing at their craft. He's as good as it gets in it's, acting. It's like when you're talking about Ustaji Zakir Hussein. Exactly. I don't know what to say here. Right. Because you're, I, I can't critique you because you're so, like, there's nothing to critique. Right. <laughs> and yeah. you're just, and so I'm just usually, when I'm watching, I'm just in awe of yeah, it's how like when good you, he is. It's like when you watch the movie The Two Popes. Yeah. You're, you're watching Jonathan Price and Sir Anthony Hopkins, and when it's over and you want to talk about the acting, you're like, it's the best it can get. Yeah. Acting can't get any better than that. Well, no. What do you want me to say? No. And that's that's really pretty much every time we watch the man. From the first time we saw him yep. in the Deborah film with yep. uh, Colkey in that film as well. <laughs> I want to see that reaction again. We talk about it a lot. And our response to, who was that guy? That guy's clearly a thespian. Because you, you can tell, if you're an actor, you know actors. You can tell instantly if they're good at what they do. And if but they've I think it's, training. I think it's so funny. It would be like... It would be like somebody who didn't know somewhere else seeing Anthony, Sir Anthony Hopkins, Hopkins in something and saying, who was the guy who had that little scene? Because that guy's really good. <laughs> That's exactly what <laughs> exactly it is. Exactly it. Uh, yeah, he, uh, all of his scenes were just so good. He brings such an honesty and a, such, a, such a believability to everything he does from yeah. the little Deborah dad that he was to the a little Wednesday. dad in the Topeka film that we just watched yep. to a Wednesday to literally anything we've seen him in. He can do it. He can carry a film. Uh -huh. He can partner in the carrying and he can play a small part and he will always do them all and exactly the way it needs to be done. Film. Yes. That amazing short uh, film. The mut, mut, uh, Gosh. Mutton Rogan Josh? Or something? Rogan Josh. Rogan, Rogan Josh. Well, we've seen two. That was when he was at the, the, the dinner table, right? Yeah. I'm talking about the one where he and that girl. Oh, the girl in the restaurant. The restaurant. Another great one. Another great one. Yeah. Everything he does. Yeah. Is so good. So like, it's it's hard to say enough good things because I want to, but none of them are. It's just like when you're talking about Usagi Zakirisane or uh, other great artists at uh, art dancing or whatever. There's not nothing you can say can be um, worthy of what you you've just witnessed. Yeah. That's it. It's a, the, the really the only thing you can say is that there's. He's as good as they get. Yeah, he, he really is. is as good as they get. And he, it's it's so amazing to watch him and Kalki. Yeah. Uh, in in this film, because obviously she's an amazing actress in her own right, but obviously she's holding her own with, and wait, I had no doubt that she had could. No doubt. Obviously, yep. um, with uh, Sir Nasserd and Shaw, um, but she did an amazing, amazing. My favorite scene. I don't know if it's your favorite scene. Was the one at, at the car when they finally the argument. When they started yelling at each other. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get into the writing and why I love the writing so much in this, but I, I thought, because you, you, you believed both of them, and you could see their both perspectives from this, and I yep. thought both of them were, were playing it very honestly. Very honestly. Yeah. I thought they were playing it very honestly. I felt like the, the, the fighting they had with each other was extremely justified, which is a credit to the writing and whatever improv was going on with the writing. Mm -hmm. I think the resolution to some of their conflict was very believable. It, it it was it was exactly what the trailer advertised. Mm -hmm. The trailer made you feel like what you were going to get was a really wonderful relationship film that's going to focus on dialogue and scenes with these two people going through a really hard thing, and they're going to have a level of bonding that happens going through a shared sorrow. And that's exactly what this gave you. Uh, I, 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 I thought every moment was great. And it's a it really is a credit... And I've said this about some films. This is not happy subject matter. This could be a turnoff to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. If you talk about the fact that, hey, you want to sit through a movie that has to do with two people watching their most precious loved one going through a traumatic uh, health thing that's going to probably result in their death? Yay! Fun times! <laughs> but what's so great about it is their struggles were very human. They both had different struggles, even though they were going through the same thing. That you know, when when they both said, "You can't relate to what I'm going through," they they were both right. Mm -hmm. You know, so I it's just a lot of fun. I could watch it again right now just for watching Kulki and Nasirid and 
work together. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Uh, and the, the the writing in this was so good from on every level. I feel like because yeah, one it was it was funny, it was nice, it was relatable, it was sad, it was intense, made you angry, made you angry. But I can see the perspective of every single person, which is mm-hmm. which is good writing. Yep, it's not. One person is a good guy, one person is a bad guy, and you're like, okay, no stick figures they're, here. They're just writing it because, right? To be the but you fully fleshed out characters. When they were having the them. argument, I was like, I see Miss Arrogant's point. Fully fleshed out. Characters. I see Kalki's point here. I also loved the what they did with uh, uh, Rajit, his mm-hmm. character. The fact that because unfortunately, and it's not really unfortunate. That's how doctors have to be. Like the fact that they're, um, he he was like, you gotta. Kind of put on. You have to be be nice and, and and firm, and you have to let them know what you're doing. But obviously, in the next when he leaves, he's talking about what he's having for dinner because yep. this is his job, right? And they're they're desensitized. That's it's not a bad thing. It's there. You, they kind of have to. They kind of have to be police human. officers. Yes. Any, anybody who's in a, a crazy line of work where they see a lot of death, unfortunately, you just kind of have to be that way. And I love that they they wrote that in uh, as opposed to just. Um, having a, a doctor who's like, oh, I care so much when they probably don't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and they don't want your person to die, but this is just a job as well. And there may have, someone could have a complaint. I don't. Someone could have a complaint that maybe the story was a bit simple in terms of what really goes down in the medical world. Like if we were to make a movie about this mm. in American mm. medicine, right? We could really go into some details about how jacked our medical yeah. world is here. But there were some questions I had though. <laughs> but they covered what was more universally true. Yeah. Because I think pretty much everywhere in the world you're gonna have a lot of these exact same issues. Mm-hmm. And I feel like had they had gone into some of the more political kinds of aspects of it, I think it was wise yeah. not to. Yeah, it was more just about Miss Air and, and, and uh, her relationship. Yeah. And and, uh, and touched on it enough to let you know, yeah, this is there and this is a real I was, problem. I was curious how the doctor could just do what he wants when the person who's in charge, because obviously in America, the, if Kolke said, I don't want to have it, even if he did not agree, obviously he couldn't do it because mm-hmm. him and the hospital would have been sued out the ass. And right. Obviously the hospital would take over the doctor and be like, right. you can't do it if she says no. Right. So that's, can he do that in India? Well, I, I, unless. That's, that's, the, that's one of the questions I had. I was like, because obviously, you know, that couldn't happen here. Well, it couldn't unless the person doesn't have a specific, like if they don't have an NDR, for example, which is a, a, a do not a, a DNR, a do yeah, not DNR, resu- DNR yeah, yeah, yeah. do not resuscitate. If they don't have anything particularly legally verbalized, oftentimes it is up to the doctor to make a decision about something, and the family doesn't have a say in it because there's nothing legally, and that does result in lawsuits. Mm. And some of them go either way depending on yeah, circumstances. In America usually they go in the way of not getting sued. Yeah, just because insurance no, is for hospitals and exactly. stuff. Exactly. So I didn't know. But uh, anyway, but I. I, I I liked it because it was a nice conflict, that scene where she came in and had the friend and, and uh, uh, Rajit, who's always a fantastic... I feel always like they good. always wanted to play an asshole, though. Yeah, but he's always... he's always That's great as he can do that, but not he doesn't... It's a credit to the writing and the things that he does, but it's a credit to him and that he doesn't make these stick figure caricatures no. of being the... You know, he wasn't just the antagonist in this. Yeah. And what I loved was, we mentioned this earlier, they both have similarities... Kalki and Nasir, mm-hmm. but they also have differences, and I love that the conflict that uh, Rajat, the doctor, what he had, it's interesting because his character name is the same, his real name is the same as the character name of her husband, mm-hmm. Rajat, but he has a fight with both of them for different reasons, mm-hmm. and I love that. I thought that was really intriguing. Yeah, it was, the, the writing on this was so good, and I, like I said, I, just, I feel like they could have expanded a little bit, because obviously... It was funny at times when Kolki thought he was cheating on her, <laughs> and then it turns yeah. out it was just, it was just his, a, his partner. guy. I love that. I was like, well, technically they could still be sleeping. Could and still Kulky, be. You don't know. Could, that could be a whole new revelation. Uh, <laughs> um, but then uh, the whole realization of when this Sheridan Shah admitting that got me emotional. Something that uh, he, he the mistake he made thirty years ago. Thirty years ago. Um, and and wanting to tell her, and then and and, and that was. What was what made that so emotional is because, first of all, that he's doing it. Period. That mm-hmm. he's been carrying that. But what it meant in the moment, because it was great that they did it when they did. Because what it tells you is that's part of the reason he needed her to stay. Was because he couldn't let her go without her knowing the truth. 
And that was one of the main reasons, among others, that he was saying she's got to be alive. So not only is it sad that he was saying that for the reality of it, but it was also him acknowledging the fact that as much as I've been fighting, you're probably going to go. And I got to say this now. And this was one of the reasons I needed you not to go. Yeah. It was it really was well so written. Because my, uh, my wife's, her uh, dad's parents uh been together since they were 16 they're now i think in their low 80s mm. been together a long time um and she's been on dallas for, for a long long time and she's just had a heart attack and all that kind of stuff and so she's been ready to go right she's not on she's not like on bed she's rest not, right. and stuff like that but she's she's been like like when she ever she was asked for christmas this year she's like what do you want she's like i want to go to heaven <laughs> yeah and so but obviously he He's not ready to lose his best friend. Right. And all that kind of stuff is so heartbreaking. Yeah. Because so, yeah. obviously you, you understand him. It's like, I don't want to yeah. lose my best friend. Right. Obviously, I don't, I don't want to live this world alone without you. Right. And you understand her. I wouldn't want to right. live on dialysis exactly. three times a week. Exactly. It's Absolutely such a terrible right thing. So I thought, I thought it was very believable what they what they did in this with Nasser. And obviously he was playing it so truthfully. And his wife was so good dead on, like, yeah. dead on the bed. Yep. Well, <laughs> and, and the other, both of them, though their roles were small, I really believed when we got to see these flashback moments of them with their spouses, I really believed these were marriages that were happy, wonderful marriages and the primary thing that they had in their mind. And I really appreciated as well the sweetness of the bonding between Nasiruddin and Kalki that allowed them these moments of respite that... In the um, house when they were dancing and drinking. Yeah, and... They, and Lay and, and and even little moments like little moments like this, like getting to know each other and how in the waiting the the blessing of them getting to know each other, just something as simple as she, when when she said to him like, uh, Shiv, you said fuck. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> and the jokes about Twitter. Yeah. And uh, and how sometimes they were both right, sometimes they were both wrong. Mm -hmm. And just the 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 beauty of their shared and waiting is a perfect title yeah. for this for this film. The fact that she was ready to give up because she knew her young husband who they just they hadn't been together as long obviously as these other people. Right. But she also knew that he wouldn't want to live as a vegetable. Right. Um, which once again is totally understandable. Like, yeah. I wouldn't want to live that way. Right. I, uh, t t so it's it's wonderful when you have writing that you believe every single angle that people are coming from, yeah. even in, and in the conflicts that they've come. This guy's been with his wife for six, or 40 years. He's like, why would you want to give that up? Yep. Why would you want to give this relationship up? You, you, you don't love them. You just go kill them. You don't yep. love them. <laughs> yep. And then you also understand Kolke. He's like... He wouldn't want to live this way. I know he wouldn't want to live this way. Yeah. And as, um, it's it was just absolutely wonderful to watch. Yeah. Um, the only, Like I said, the only gripe, if they, you can call it, is just that I, I could have stayed in this world longer. Mm -hmm. And I could, they could have gone a little even deeper into the pool. But it's not a... Yeah. It's really... It's, I think it's an A-plus film. I, think I did it's, too. It's, and it's really wonderful that the score... Uh, Mikey McCleary is the one who did the score for yeah. it who's done quite a few scores, including Gully Boy, thank you very much. Oh, did he really? Uh, yeah, I didn't even realize it until oh, I wow. looked it up. Nice. But this is one of those films where you don't even notice the score. Yeah. And that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of film that needs that. It needs that. This film could have been ruined with melodramatic oh, yeah. scoring. We've seen it before. Ruined, but it had the opposite. It had the kind of score that you don't even notice, and then when it's over, you realize, wow, the score just added to the ambiance and didn't detract in any way. And there were a lot of moments of absolute silence, just quiet, um, which needed. I also thought her friend who came to support her did a lovely job. I really believed their friendship. I really believed the things that she was dealing with. I loved it. I also loved the, they allowed you to watch the journey they were taking, especially Kalki's character, spiritually, without it becoming preachy or pontificating in any way. Like when she shows up to the temple, and the guy is there, and he's so happy she's there and said he's been praying for her. But for her, it was like, eh, she, she's, she was there for her moment. And he did well, too. Like he that. did a great job. And then when she told her friend she was chanting, and her, and her friend was like, oh, you are? There was a genuine happiness born out of her personal experience for it. Yeah. So every, again, also, fully fleshed out people. I also like the attention to detail they had given a lot of things, like uh, when she went to the, the 
hotel room for the first time after everything. And she got his bag and oh my goodness! And, and Steph was like, put on the put on the shirt, smell his shirt, and it's first and the first thing you smell, and then she put it on. When she, was she like, That's, my, my wife was like, that's exactly what I would have done. Exactly, and it made me wonder, as well, because I, in a moment like that, I would probably not that anyone would have to, but me just as an actor, I would ask for yeah a, a, a shirt of. And Drani's probably yeah, just, so you, just so that I could myself, because it would trigger me. Smell is such a powerful emotion, um, and it, it is exactly what someone would do. And it, it was that again is a testament to the writing of these very human, believable people going through real circumstances. And and you haven't seen Afterlife, mm -hmm. but that's one of the most wonderful things about Afterlife and the tweets that Ricky Gervais is getting. Someone just straight up tweeted him and said, "I didn't take my life." because I watched Afterlife. Oh, wow, Jesus. And many messages of, I just lost my mom, I just lost my dad, I just lost a child, and Afterlife came into my world and it made me appreciate and accept what's going on and move forward. Mm -hmm. And this, I think this is the same kind of a film that, that anyone who's gone through this kind of experience or is going through it mm -hmm. would feel it, would help them not feel so alone. And another moment um, in terms of continuity that I liked for the writing when Kalki was in his place and went to the bathroom mm -hmm. obviously it was undone there was no hand towel mm. <laughs> because I didn't guys, notice that guys don't think about that stuff yeah I didn't come, notice that they Good don't pick they up don't, on that they don't put out hand towels yeah. for people to why that's a good pick that's up a woman that. thing to think about yeah because <laughs> they're just like yeah wipe your hands on my on the towel uh, I, I absolutely I don't you you always see these things coming but when she passed out in the bathroom mm -hmm. I went Oh crap! What? And then when she woke up, I went, "Ah, nice, yeah, it's a dream. Yeah. nice." Did okay. you know that was a dream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of yeah, course you figured that one. <laughs> <laughs> Can't fool Corbin. <laughs> well, it, and then it kind of almost went immediately to the, uh, Arjun was mm -hmm. there, and so I was like, "Yeah, I kind of knew it was a dream." Of course, um, immediately. Uh, but yeah, fantastic film. Yeah, uh, absolutely fantastic. So hats off to everybody for Anu for for directing, obviously Nasser and. and and uh, our dos Koki. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know if you. Yeah, anyways. Let us know what you thought about the film <laughs> down below. <laughs>